Good morning. I'm Gareth Piggott, and uh, this is Richard Fairchild. We both work at the Greater London Authority. Um, we're going to basically run through a few slides. We haven't got the incident analysis reports to show. We kind of assume that everyone has used incident analysis at some point in the past. So it is, it's going to be <coughs> screenshots predominantly today. <coughs> we're going to talk about our use of incident analysis and why we use it and any problems that we find uh, with, with it at the moment. Um, so I'll give you a background to who we are, first of all. Uh, the intelligence unit, which is where we work, uh, basically is made up now of the data management and analysis group, or DMAG, as some of you might have come across this in the past, but especially people from London probably would have heard of DMAG in the past. And now we also incorporate in economics, and there's about 40 staff in the unit. Um, so there's only kind of about five, five of the 40 that would use instant atlas in terms of putting reports together. Okay, so we're a team of researchers and analysts, so we cover lots of different policy areas, including health, education, crime, economics, and opinion research. I work in general statistics, and Rich works here in the crime data team. What we tend to do is supply a lot of data to the mayor, to the assembly, and to the boroughs, and to the public as well. And lots of other public bodies, think tanks, academics, really, so a really wide range of different organisations. Our analysis is normally facts based. Um, so certainly that anything that you would have read would be fact fact based. It wouldn't be political, it wouldn't have policy, mayoral policy bits and pieces in it. Anything we do that tends to be political or mayoral policy would be basically internal use only. So you wouldn't have, we wouldn't get to see that kind of uh, analysis anyway. So really the analysis that we come out with on, on our website is really for anybody to use for their own for their own um, kind of policy and idea development within their own organisations. Uh, our key method of disseminating our data is called the London Data Store website. The data store has been open for just over two years. It opened in January 2010. There's a screenshot of one of the, one of the pages of the data store. So, that, and there's the, uh, the, the URL for it as well there on the page. Basically, the data store's got lots and lots of data relating to London. Most of it is at borough level or a smaller area level, such as wards, MSOA, LSOA level. So we're really catering for London boroughs and those sorts of people who are planning for uh, monitoring local, what's going on in, in neighbourhood level kind of, kind of data. There's about 500 data sets on the data store. Um, so it takes a lot of keeping up to date. Um, it's all about giving free and full access to the data, so we're very much into open data. Any data that appears in reports that isn't on the data store tends to be heavily licensed, therefore we can't put it on the data store. So we, we might be able to put things like percentages into the Internet Atlas reports, but then not be able to put those into, say, the spreadsheet where we can actually give the full data set. That's purely down to licensing reasons. Otherwise, wherever possible, we make it absolutely full access in, in Excel spreadsheets as well as where possible in Instant Atlas reports. Okay, so we do this for, um, predominantly for, sa for saving time and resources for other London bodies. So we do things once rather than each London bar or organisation having to do things 33 or 40 times. Hopefully we're actually saving money for the London taxpayer. Uh, we help both private and public organisations to develop policy and ideas, bids and apps. We don't charge, by the way, for the private sector to use the data, it's all absolutely free as well to them. Even if they then go on to make products which make them money, that's absolutely fine with us. Um, so really, our, one of our main aims in the unit is to get our work a high profile. Okay. Now, one of the key reasons we use this is because it handles such a lot of data in one go. It handles Lots and lots of different geographies. So we, this sh is showing MSOA level, but as I say, we show ward level, LSOA level. We actually show different levels of geographies within an against analysis as well. So you can actually select on the top on one of the toggle buttons at the top of the page the level of geography you want. So you can handle different levels within the same report, which is actually really useful to us. Um, the only slight drawback of some of these ones where you have maybe between 100 or 300 different indicators and small area level here like LSOA is it can take a long time to load up. But, so the LSOA one that's on the, on the website now takes about up to a minute to load on some people's machines. So that's 
one of the slight drawbacks, but we tend to try and keep them as small as possible, so they might only be in, say, 15 seconds. That would tend to be okay with us. A minute's a bit too long. Okay, the, the other thing is there's no need for our customers to download any extra files. It's all about just there on the screen. <coughs> you know, change any settings. We actually brand the page to like a data store page. So the last one, the last one, you saw the data store, and here you can see the same red and black and grey banding at the top of the page. So it makes it look like a data store page itself. That's, that's really important to us. Okay, so we can display the patterns in the data without any further need for analysis. Further need for written analysis would be, would uh, perhaps actually, if we draw out certain aspects of the data, it might actually lead to us being accused of, of bias, political bias. So it's actually quite important for us to actually just show the data and make the, and let, let people make their own judgments from, from what it's actually showing, from the patterns on, on the bar chart, on the line chart, and in the, in the, on the map. We always have a filter, so especially on these, on, uh, on small area data, so people can zoom to their own, normally it's the <coughs> borough level or say the Olympic ward, so that's also really important. And people can, on these ones, they can use the Google, the Google Map background, so particularly with, with small areas, people don't really know which MSO or MSO they're looking for. So to, to find a train station or a car, things like that, really important. We don't tend to put the Google background on, on the borough maps because people know which borough they are after that. And also, if you've got a Google map on, you can't export, you can't export to a uh, JPEG. So that's the problem with, with the MSO and the LSOA things. You can't actually export these to a JPEG and then print it uh, separately. So we actually sometimes have to do two versions of these, one with, with the Google background, Google map background, and one without, just for that reason. Um, as I was saying, I already mentioned the brand, but that's it's really useful. We can have the, uh, the page looking like a data store page. Our main objectives overall, um, in terms of presenting data, is that the data should be clear, clear and easy to understand. Um, key analysis should be visual, and we'd like to use lots of colour. Uh, the, the software should be widely available without actually needing to download anything new. I mean, this, this uses Flash, it's not this. Not absolutely ideal because some of our users can't actually download anything to their machines. They have it locked down by IT, so that's uh, one of the little issues we have. And uh, we like to promote our work by alerting the right, the right people to work on our new data sets. So what we, did, what we tend to do is once we've done all the work in Snapless, we've got loads of data on the data store, we tend to do easy mailings. So our mailing list is really king, and that's what we that's how we survive, as people who put their email addresses on the mail list. Without that, we can't really promote our work. Okay. <coughs> We've had some feedback uh, to our work on this internet list. We, our, um, our main our flagship publication is called Focus on London, and it comes out kind of every couple of months. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a thematic report. And it covers different topics like population, housing, poverty, and skills. Um, so as I say, these are regular reports that come out, and they normally have an instant atlas report with them. Um, and when we did our survey back in June, we got 115 responses to our survey. Um, but we found that 41% of our, our users didn't use or haven't seen an instant atlas. So it was a bit, bit higher than we would have liked, actually. But there's a little bit of concern to us. But only 1% said they couldn't access it. And that, that's much lower than we thought it was, so that those two figures were both a surprise to us. Um, but those who did use it were very positive. 83% of who have used it said that it was either excellent or good, and nobody said it was poor or very poor. Um, and Rich here does his own crime survey of his own users who are, who are professional customers. They're all data analysts. Um, but 44% of his customers were not aware of the crime analysts that he put together, and 30% wanted more information. And also, many of those wanted more clear instructions on how to use it. So there is still kind of a technical aspect of the reports which seems to scare people off a little bit, which is kind of why we make the, the page layout as simple as we can, brand it like our own page, and just remove as many buttons, buttons as we can. Um, this is not kind of an early, a slightly earlier one where we've still got six buttons at the top of the page. We're trying to cut down on that. So there's fewer, there's kind of less clutter on the page, if you like. We always have on the right, uh, so on the left-hand side of the page, the, the list of data available, the list of uh, indicators, because 
if it's not there, then people have to click the data button. Often people don't re realise there's more in there than, than what comes up on the first page, and they think, oh, that's a bit boring, and click off it. So we've always had the list of all the, all the variables there, as well as now we start to put, as I say, this is an early one, so it doesn't have the, the line chart on it, but we tended to always put now a line chart with the trend data on it, as well as the bar chart and the tables here. And in the bottom corner, we always have the, uh, the source data linked to the data on the data store and metadata about the, the strengths and weaknesses of the data itself. Uh, so here's, yeah, here's a slightly later version, more recent version of something we did. You can see there's fewer buttons at the top. There's just the data, the filter, get data and help button now. And the branding's still there. And we've also pushed the page up a lot higher. So we're using more space at the top. Uh, where there used to be gaps at the top, we're now using, like, kind of using all the space on the page. That's because, basically because of the small area, so there's just so much on the page. Um, and there's an elections. We also do elections reporting for the mayoral elections and the local elections. That's just another example of uh, some, of the, some of the reports that we do. Yeah, I think we're just going to... Yeah, we're going to take that. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, just a couple of other examples there, I won't get into a huge amount of details. Uh, but from a crime perspective, we have both uh, internal and uh, public uh, sort of customers. Uh, internally, we receive, on a regular monthly basis, police, ambulance, fire brigade, uh, Transport for London, British Transport Police, incident data, which we put in, into incident analysis, as well as other uh, visualisation tools for both our internal customers, as well as uh, at last count, about 500 professional uh, sort of customers and clients, uh, data analysts uh, with community safety interest, private community safety interest across London. Uh, and that's one of the analysis we use, which covers all that data, sort of time sliders and that kind of thing on there. Uh, something we're pushing now is sensitivity of crime data means that it can't often be uh, disseminated. Uh, so we've been looking over the last sort of six months or so around any crime data that can be. Uh, this is quite a good example which is useful from a public point of view and internally uh, about how does London sit with the rest of the country. This is something we produce quarterly uh, to uh, basically to inform the Deputy Mayor who I report to. But it's also something we put on the data store website as well because the data is home office data and it's uh, free and available. Uh, very quickly, so where we're running over a little bit. i uh, just going to run through some of the issues and some of the challenges we face with using uh, Instant Atlas and uh, working in the environment we do. Gareth's mentioned a couple of these already, so I won't labour the point. Uh, Gareth's mentioned the flash issues, the Google Maps export issues, uh, track a number of page visits and feedback. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult unless we're doing sort of ad hoc surveys. Uh, you know, you, you put the effort into creating the analysis, you want to know usage and you can't track all via Google Analytics, for example. IA is not all users play with formal data reporting. You can't please all the people all the time. People are always still going to want the raw data in the spreadsheet form. You may not trust the fact that you've done the work for them. You're always going to have that issue, it's something that we come across quite a lot. Simply explain functionality to a wide range of customers. So I've got customers from the dev team there right through to members of the public and uh, in my experience people either see it and get it or don't and uh, trying to explain, especially in Britain, in Britain terms, uh, all the functionality is very difficult. Some of the challenges we face in our sort of strategic government environment, uh, public sector budget cuts. On one side of this is that uh, this may mean that our advocacy would actually get used more because it's sort of uh, a far easier way for managers to see data rather than to analyse themselves. But then the flip side of that is the, especially in my experience from the police environment, uh, the analysts and researchers are the ones whose jobs are getting cut in a lot of cases and they're often the ones that understand internet that's the most and report back to their, to their managers. So. Uh, it's a challenge we face in terms of getting the uh, information across. Obviously, the government backs open data. However, much of the data is still heavily licensed or restricted. 
or collections or distributions have been cut, such as national indicators. Uh, however, conversely, crime data is becoming more and more open with the launch of the Police.UK website and Home Office data and a lot of police forces putting their own data on their website. So it means more scrutiny for my products, for example, because that data is public. Tasks and non-tasks in the political environment in which we work. Uh, often, from my point of view, if I find an interesting data set, which I'd like to visualise, selling that to uh, politicians and other people within our, environment, within our political environment, it may not fit, may not be flavour of the month at that time, may not fit their policy ideals, uh, despite it being really useful data, from our point of view. Non-tasks, you get the politicians and other people tasking, can we have some data or visualisation on this? Or no, the data's not available or in the, uh, in the right format for, for what you want. Uh, so it's, it, it's, it's not always ideal. Competing audiences and competing needs. Uh, this comes back to sensitivity of data a lot of the time. Dissemination uh, of data, caveats around data dealing with and disseminating data to everyone from internal right through to public. Uh, you can't always come up with a product that suits everyone. Getting initial and continued sponsor buying and interest. Uh, we don't often have a problem selling an idea, or selling an instant atlas, uh, but the continued uh, buying and uh, Monitoring the usage uh, is often an issue, and with very transient and fast changing priorities around uh, things like devolution within the GLA, London, uh, new functional bodies being set up like the Mayor's Office of Policing and Crime, uh, often that interest can wane, and you often need to keep on top of it uh, to make sure people do have, still have the interest in the products you're producing. Feedback, uh, I've mentioned briefly. Uh, so many customers, potentially, members of the public, it's very hard to get feedback and engage levels of interest. And challenges of public accountability. Uh, I find a lot of the time with crime data that, uh, obviously, Deputy Mayor, for example, I report to, who covers crime for London, uh, he's held accountable to any crime data that comes out. And because of social media, Twitter, for example, he can be held to account within five minutes of that data coming out. So products I produce, there's a lot more pressure on those for him to inform him, but also to get them out in a timely manner, also to make sure they're accurate. Uh, so it's something we face on a sort of very often, uh, on a very often basis. And that's it. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Richard.